Hey there everybody, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I'm back with a new layout for Hip Kit Club and this is my first layout using the new 2019 October kits. And right away this paper just jumped out at me. It's from Pretty Little Studio and I am in love with this fall colored wreath. Um, I'm also going to pair it with this wreath cut file that is available on the website for the month of October, exclusive cut files for hip kits. And I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek of the colors that are in the color kit. We get three of the Lindy's Starburst sprays, and I've already mixed them up and did some sample spraying. Look at these colors. The purple one has blue shimmery powder in it. So the spray is purple, but the shimmer is this really pretty teal. It's like magic. And then you get this bright, bold pink, and then a golden yellow. These colors are amazing, and they match the kits so, so well. And so I'm going to be using the pink and the yellow one today. And I just had to show you these because when I did the samples, I was ooing and aahing all over the place. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my little Cutter B scissors out, and I'm going to fussy cut this wreath out because I want to be able to fold up some of the edges and create some dimension there. So I've got it cut out as best I can and then what I thought I would do is layer this cut file on top of it because I, I wanted lots of texture and things and I wanted the uh, color wreath to kind of show behind it so you get hints of color. And then I'm going to use this cute picture of <laughs> me trying to get a picture with both of my girls at the same time and you can tell how that turned out uh, my husband had the camera and this was back in 2012 so uh, i was trying to get reese to sit on my knee and i was going to try to grab Paige to sit on my other knee and yeah this action shot is what we got and it's one of my favorites and i've got several pictures from this one little photo uh, photo shoot but this is just one um, anyway, so I'm going to use some of the thick white cardstock as my base, and I coated most of it with clear gesso to prep the page. And I'm going to come in with these sprays. Okay, so you saw on my little practice sheets there how bold these are. And I didn't do any gesso work or anything in my little notebook there. I just sprayed directly down. So when you use gesso and you add water to dilute it like this, it's going to completely change the color. And I'm going to show you here once I'm done with this background, I'm going to pull the samples back out and show you how different it looks. So it all depends on the look that you want. Um, you remember how bold that pink is. So when you spray it directly down, it's very, very dark, very, very rich. So I add a little bit of water to it. I wanted to soften it up a little bit. And so you can already see how it looks like a totally different color. So I always say invest in the color kits because, you know, one color can go a long way. Just because it looks one way when you spray it directly down and just let it air dry does not mean that it is always going to look that way. Um, it changes a little bit when you use gesso. It changes a lot when you add water. And I love that about these colors because sometimes you want it to be lighter. Sometimes you want it to be darker. And in this case, I wanted a little bit of both. So I thought that I would do a little bit of yellow on the upper right side area and then a little bit of the pink on the bottom area. And I want this to show a little bit around the edges of the wreath and then on the inside of the wreath. And it looks like a big, hot, messy mess, but once it dries and you put everything back on top of it, it looks different. So look here, this is almost dry, but look how different it looks based on how you how it looks when you spray it just directly onto some paper. Completely different colors, and I love that. So you can manipulate these dark colors and still get a pastel-ish look. So yeah, it just, I, I suggest playing around with these on some scrap paper and see how they work for you. Um, if you're not a gesso fan, you can still water it down. Some of you may not want to water it down. You may want to just spray it directly on to the paper. You know, there are lots of different ways to do it. So I spend a lot of time working on this background. Um, I add water, I add splatters, uh, I let it dry. Um, I did not use my heat gun at all on this background. I just kind of let it dry naturally. Um, at one point, I let it dry and then I set some uh, heavy paper pads on top of it and let it sit overnight. 
uh, because, you know, the paper is going to warp a little bit, but I wanted it to be as flat as it could be for the next day because I wanted to come back and continue to work on the background. My photo is going to kind of go over to the left where you keep seeing me play with it there, and I'm going to wind up tucking the edge of it kind of underneath some of those leaves in the wreath. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I splattered some of the pink and it came out and landed on my finger. And when this dark pink initially comes out, the very first time I sprayed it, it looked red. And so it reminded me of blood. And I thought, this is not pink. This is red. But when it dried, it was completely fuchsia. And you can see that on my little notebook tester there. So uh, don't let it fool you. It's, it's definitely pink. Um, the pink color is called Bougainvillea fuchsia, and it is exactly a fuchsia. It's gorgeous. Even though, like I said, when I add water, it looks completely different. All right, this is the next day. You can see the difference in colors there. Um, I'm still liking how it's looking. I think it's really, really pretty, um, but I'm not done working on it. Um, the yellow color is called, this is so funny, Grab a Guy Gold. Grab a Guy, like what guy? Who? Who are we going to grab? Grab a guy. Yep, that's what it's called. But it's gorgeous, I tell you that. It's like a yellowy, golden. It's very, oh, I love it. It's so pretty. So now I just sprayed it directly on, and I'm going to kind of just let it sit. I didn't want to add any water to this. I wanted it to be that darker, bold color, and I love all the variation of that. And something else to be aware of, if you're going for that extra extra shimmer because you saw how shimmery they were when you do add water like this it does dilute some of the shimmer away so be aware of that um in this case on this layout i wasn't going just for the shimmer factor you can kind of see here the difference when i just spray it directly on is more shimmer shimmerier it's got more shimmer than the parts that are lighter that were diluted with water so you know just be aware of that it does get lighter and less sparkly with the the water added to it, but I'm okay with it. You know, I, I do love the shimmer factor in that, but it's okay if it's not all completely shimmery. But uh, the purple color that you saw in the beginning that I did not use is called Sweet Violet Purple Teal. And like I said, it is a gorgeous purple with a blue shimmery powder, and it's just like magic watching the blue shimmer against the purple color so if you got the color kit this month you will love it all right so now i'm going to start to build everything um this is how i want the wreaths to overlap so i'm going to add just little dots of glue here and there to uh keep it together and i don't want it to be completely flat because i want to be able to kind of fold up the edges of the leaves to kind of uh, give it dimension and I do want to pop the whole thing up off the page, so I'm going to cut some long strips of some sticky adhesive foam there and just kind of wrap it around the, uh, the edges there. And then when I flip it over, it's going to be raised up off the page. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my picture. And I've got a little bit of sp open space to the left of me and my daughter, so I can tuck it underneath the, uh, the leaves there. And it's not going to interfere with anything important in the picture. All right, so now I'm going to come in with embellishments, and I've picked two of the Pocket Life cards that I'm going to use as layers, uh, a light blue one and then a golden yellow one, and then um, there's a ton of leaves in the kit. There's sticker leaves, there are acetate leaves, there are these colored vellum leaves, there are um, die cuts, there are a ton of leaves, and they're so gorgeous. They all match. There's yellow, there's um deep orange there's a couple different shades of those fall colors there's a light blue there's some pink so i'm just kind of playing around with all of those and seeing what i like i'm going to tuck in some of the leaves underneath the inside of the wreath in various places and i'm going to use some pink thread today as well as some light blue thread and i'm going to put the pink thread kind of up there in the right upper corner area against all that yellow background so the pink thread shows against that and then I'm going to put the blue thread down here on the bottom left area against that deep pink section and um, I, I did pull out the yellow thread but there was really just no place that was jumping out at me to put it so I don't even wind up using that but um, 
yeah I'm gonna go ahead and start to glue down the leaves and there's a lot of variation on the leaves so all kinds of different styles there are flowers oh yeah there's also chipboard I didn't I had forgot to mention that but um I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the wreath here and I'm gonna work on the title I really wanted to use these scripty gold thickers and I decided that my title was going to be this is real life because it was you know I hardly ever get a perfect picture of my kids posing by themselves with me somebody's always running away or they got their fingers in their ears you know and I just say just snap the picture just take it just take it whatever we get that's what we get and this is what we got and I love it because it's each everybody in the picture that's just them and you just have to love it and go with it um, I had a time trying to work with those scripty gold thickers because they were so curvy and scripty that it was hard to connect them. So I kind of wound up cutting off some of the uh, ends of each of the letters to make them look like they were a, a connected word. Um, and I had a time trying to do that. And they're not that sticky. When I peeled them off, they barely even stuck to my fingers. So uh, I'm definitely going to have to add glue to that but we'll worry about that later um all I'm doing here is embellishing with some of the chipboard pieces some of the um hot pink leaves I'm, I'm not leaves um flowers and then that little blue circle over to the left that says happy fall I'm going to use that and then some of these orange leaves and they're just little details here and there I'm going to go ahead and glue those down now here's what I decided to do um off camera I played around with these gold scripty thickers and I glued them down to vellum now they're basically one connected word and so then I'm just going to fussy cut them out and now I've got them how I want them and they look like someone wrote the word and the letters are actually connected and but now I can move it all around as one big piece one big word and I don't have to worry about each individual letter um, so I'm going to kind of loop the word life on top of the photo and then real is going to be right to the right of the photo there and then I'm going to use these little mini exclusive orange alphas to create this is and I took a minute to kind of decide how I wanted to organize that I didn't like the way the the words look stacked and it just so happens that they fit right inside the curvy part or the loopy part of the R and the loopy part of the L I would call that a Gen Scowism because they nestle right in between the word and it's perfect. So shout out to Jen Scow and all I've learned from her and her nestling abilities. It's perfect when it just works out like that. So yeah, love how that turned out. And I also love to mix and match. So you, can, you can't even really tell that I stuck them to vellum. You can't even see it. It's like invisible. So yeah, that's a tip. If you need to connect your scripty words, glue them down to some vellum and then cut them out okay so I was not satisfied with the amount of leaves on this layout so I decided to go with some stamping and this is from the exclusive stamp set this leaf is amazing look how awesome it stamps I wanted pink and so I pulled out some of my seedless preserves distress oxide I love that color it's a deep pinkish purple and then I'm just going to fussy cut them out. And I stamped it onto some of the packaging that some of the uh, stickers came in. Fussy cut those out. And then I'm going to tuck them in around the wreath. Kind of bend them so the center has a little bit of a crease in it. Add some glue. And that's all I'm doing here is just kind of sticking them in here and there. And this is just creating more dimension, more texture, pops of color. Yeah, that leaf stamp is my fave. It is... It's stamped beautifully. I love it. You got to use it. It's beautiful. Um, I'm also going to use one of them right here above the title. I'm going to kind of pull out that big pink one that I glued down already and then kind of overlap those together. And then I stuck a little yellow chipboard flower right by real life and then a little label sticker that is blue at the top of the photo. It says grateful. And then I use my pencil and my T-square ruler to draw the lines for my journaling and I'm using my gold metallic pen and then this is the glittering gold magical powder from last month that is a gorgeous shimmery gold thought I would add a little bit of that in for some gold splatter and then I added the date and that is it 
I love how this turned out. I love all the layers and all the details and all the leaves, all the colors. And you can see how the background looks now. It's basically just sort of something in the background. And I know that's what it is, but it's it doesn't overtake the layout. It kind of enhances it with the colors. Um, even though that's what takes me the longest to do. Sometimes the background winds up being the most, um, the one thing that you don't, see right away when you look at it. It's just kind of an afterthought, if that makes sense. But anyway, you can see all these details here, all the dimension, all the texture, all the fussy cutting. Um, I love how it turned out. Um, yeah, I'm not even really a seasonal scrapper, but I was loving all these fall vibes in the kit. So I cannot wait to make my next layout. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you guys have a great week ahead and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.